I heard about the Big South through a friend of mine who um, he attended last year. He had a great time, said, Tim, check it out. Number one is feedback. You gotta find out how other people react to your idea. You know, an idea could be great in your head. It could be something that's a great motivator for you. But until you actually can pitch it out there and find other people that say, yeah, that's a great idea. I love that idea. Then you get that feedback back, and then you know that you could take this to the next level. You could go out and meet investors and have the confidence. That's why events like this, put on by the Big Sal, such a great, such a great thing for entrepreneurs. We get the feedback, and we get to network. We get to see what other people are doing. Find out what other people are investing in. Uh, my name is JT Wangerson, and we started the case, case company called Loopy Cases. It's the first cell phone case with a loop on the back to help you from dropping your case. And we started it because our dad walked out of the store with his brand new iPhone and it fell on the ground. He went back inside, paid 100 bucks to fix the screen. Uh, since then, we've been able to grow our product based on the reactions of the competition that we pitched at. But most importantly, it helped us really show the market need and start to develop strategies to our customers. And it got us very, very excited very, very fast that, hey, this is, this is working. This is actually a working business. I live in Chicago, and I have a web development company that I work on with my friends. And uh, I was working on some case management software for diabetes. And I kind of got interested in this one thing, which is diabetic retinopathy, and I drilled down into that. And I got this idea, and I had to get it off my chest. So, been playing around with the idea. My friend Prakash said, you should take it to the big cell. I love how you can get 100 people in a room who are each passionate about some different idea, and you can talk to them and find something in common and say, that's really cool, that's really neat what you're doing, and, and you kind of play with your ideas together, and, and you come out with, you know, hey, this is awesome, this is a neat thing that's happening, and maybe your idea has legs, maybe you learn something that, that says, well, you know, I gotta do some more work on this. But you get in the room and you get some feedback from people, which is awesome. It was a delight to see people traveling from across the country to participate. Um, to me, it felt like Northwest Indiana had our own version of Shark Tank, and kudos to Mr. Dushan for uh, all of your energy and effort and expertise of uh, pulling all of that together. A couple of my friends had heard of the Big Cell through Purdue and uh, they recommended that we apply and, and we applied and there was only 50 applications that was taken in the uh, nationwide competition and we felt honored when our application actually got accepted. That was pretty exciting for us. Of course the cash is helpful. It, it helps you pay for for, for things, we got some product developed with uh, the cash that we won. But like the attorney that we were able to use that, that helped us get like the final stage of the, the patent completed. I'm talking about approachable, what a, what a great guy. Peter Shakula, tremendous guy, very helpful man. He's just, he's on it, he's, he's on his game. and. Uh, saved us a, a, the prize money that we won by you guys paying a part of getting our patent done and then us having to pay the rest saved us a lot of money. Well, I think Purdue really has something great here with this competition. Um, it's the first of its kind as far as I know of. I think this gears more towards just the taking that first step, you know? Because like something like that, you have to be very well established with your product or idea already and that's hard for most people, you know? Average Joe on the street with a good idea you know, back in Thomas Edison's time, they just invented it and hope it went somewhere. Now you have to have so much money for patents and backing and, you know, all these uh, just, you know, funding and people behind you to really get something done. And this is like a great first step for that because it can bring it all together if you've got that right idea. That's why I really love the competition because people will drive for hours, they'll get on planes, they'll come from all parts of almost the world to push their idea, to see if their idea works. One of the, if you have a fire burning venue that you really
have to see whether this works or it doesn't work, and the big sale is a great way to do that. I think the competition is a great idea. When I found it, I was excited to apply, and when I got the notice that I was um, had the opportunity to come compete, I was thrilled. And about three years ago, I was exposed to the benefits of teaching sign language to children, and I truly was so amazed by the fact that nonverbal children could learn to effectively communicate through the use of their hands. And so I started researching all the materials that were on the market available to people learning or hoping to teach sign language to children. The event like the Big Cell is awesome because um, I was just honored to be accepted. If I would have got disqualified during my speech but I would have met somebody here to network, then that's prize enough for me. So making sure that we can get events together where networking is a possibility, because um, a lot of the time there's people out there that could benefit you or you could benefit them, but it's hard to search for them without knowing what you're looking for. So events like this are just huge because it brings everybody together with one common goal of creation and entrepreneurial ventures. Deshaun's a great salesperson and uh, says, Don, you got to come down to this event. It's on Saturday morning at 9.30 and I'm, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever you say, Deshaun, because if you say it's good, I'm in. And I went down there and I was literally blown away by the intensity of the participants and the quality of their presentations. So glad to be here and proud supporters of the uh, Big Cell and have been so for many years. My name's Don Babcock. I head up economic development for NIBSCO. And I'm very proud of our organization and its investment of time and dollars into great initiatives like the Big Cell. On an annual basis, uh, we invest about a million one in economic development every year. And part of that million one is going into this program. Uh, but it's really the driver behind all of that is to help build our economy and innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship is right at the very foundational level in all of that. And the Big Cell is a great opportunity for us to highlight new opportunities in Northwest Indiana. If you take a look at our competition, we're the only one in the country that operates under our system. You pitch to an audience of 300, 350 people, and what you're gonna tell you right away is whether they like your product or not. Here's where this competition is different than anybody else. People are gonna hear you pitch, and then they have electronic clickers and they're gonna vote for your idea. I challenge you to find another competition that does that in the entire country right now. You get immediate feedback from the people that potentially buy your product. If you think about it, you want immediate audience feedback. One, you need money, but you can have a lot of money, so what? You run through money like water. What most people don't realize is they need money with what? Support, with mentoring. Take a look at what the concept does. It gives you, it gives you accounting, gives you legal advice, it gives you, um, technology advice, marketing device, it gives you office space, students at the university are going to help you develop a business plan. These are the mentoring aspects. The money will go in and the, and the company and out of the company as quickly as it came in. The thing with our competition is we've created something special here. It's not just the money you're going to get and see you later. We're going to hopefully mentor you over the year to get to the next level and that's the whole key. Let's welcome to the stage the creator of The Big Cell and Purdue University Calumet's Center for Entrepreneurship Success, the director, our very own Dushan Nikolovsky. Good morning, and if I can borrow something from Mr. Donald Babcock. Good morning, Northwest Indiana. <laughs> Just very briefly, uh, a couple days ago, I was with a group of friends and uh, they were telling me an interesting story. There was a small plane that was just about ready to crash. There were four passengers, but only three parachutes. First passenger gets up and says, I am, a, I am a heart surgeon, the best heart surgeon in the country. My patients need me, takes a parachute, jumps. Second person gets up 
and says, I'm the world's smartest man. My country needs me. The world needs me. Takes a parachute and jumps. The third passenger gets up and it happens to be Pope Francis. And he turns around to the fourth passenger who happens to be a 12-year-old Boy Scout and says, son, God has provided me a great life. I'm an old man. You take the parachute and save yourself. The 12-year-old Boy Scout turns around and says, Father, there's still two parachutes left. The world's smartest man just jumped out of my backpack. <laughs> the reason I bring that up, as entrepreneurs, you're going to come across a lot of smart people, intelligent people, at least they believe they are. They're going to give you all kinds of advice. But the one advice they're going to tell you most times is, don't even bother trying. Right? On your path to success, there's going to be a lot of difficult stages in your life. But you've got to have a passion. You've got to pursue this and sometimes ignore the world's smartest men. Right? Because if you really think about it, here's the thing that I think will change most of your lives. If you take a look at the rockets, the planes, the buildings, the skyscrapers, and everything that's built around you, they're built by people just like you and me. Some a little bit smarter, some a little bit less smarter but they have persistence and they try and they have it within their heart to pursue their passion. And that's what most of you will be do doing here today is pursuing that passion because there is a lot of difficult road ahead of you, but you've got to think consistent, consistent, consistent passion will take you to the next, uh, to the next level. So I welcome you here today. I wish all of you the best of luck. And I hope that all of you will befriend each other, work together, network together, because it's not simply about just being up here and winning. It's about finding out whether your product works. If you find out that your product works, it's not necessary that you maybe win the first or second prize. It's nice, but it's not always necessary. I'm going to go ahead in a few minutes give you the rules of the competition. But before we do that, why don't I welcome a few people to welcome you? And first of all, let me welcome Chancellor uh, Thomas Kean from Purdue University Calumet to welcome you and we'll get started in a little bit. Good morning. Purdue University Calumet is really dedicated to economic development uh, one of the things that we realize is that a university can be a huge impact on economic development. We have one of the largest workforces in our area and certainly in our city, as well as another 9,500 students that all have an impact on economic development. But that's the reactive piece of economic development. Universities that want to make a difference, like many of you in the room, can be proactive. And at Purdue Calumet, we try to be proactive. As you can see today, the big cell is one of our large pieces of going out and reaching out and bringing economic development to Northwest Indiana. We have the E Center, which does the same. We work closely with the SBDC. We are about to open up in two weeks a commercialization and manufacturing excellence center. It will be a place where businesses and individuals can come and gain expertise from the university. Universities are full of expertise. We have the obvious Engineering College, Technology College. We have the Business College. But then we have other areas that people don't think about. Some people want to start a business in the educational area. So we have experts in online education. There are other individuals that might want to be in the healthcare industry. We have one of the strongest nursing programs in the state. All of that expertise can come to Northwest Indiana through our new center. So as we attempt to be proactive, we all applaud you 
for being proactive as well. And we're looking to see some excitement in the room as the day moves on, as you bring to us some of your wonderful ideas and thoughts about how to make our country, our state, and Northwest Indiana a stronger economic avenue for all of our citizens. Thank you. Now let me welcome to the stage uh, one of our biggest supporters from day one, Mr. Donald Babcock from NIPSCO. And this is how you get up on stage. Well, thank you, Duchan. So let, let, me, let me help him a little bit with the welcome, right? The important thing is, and, and you all have passion in this room, but you got to exude it a little bit more. So you got to go, good morning, Northwest Indiana. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all for coming to the Big Cell. You know, I am an unabashed supporter of Purdue Calumet and Deshaun's fine work here at the Big Cell. I'm, I'm an engineering graduate from Purdue Calumet. My children are engineers because of that. And I'm proud to be here to try to inspire other people to use the value of that education you get to create something new. Because what we're all about here in Northwest Indiana is rebuilding our economy. <laughs> We have got to get back to where we were in the 70s and 80s when we were on top of the world making 125% of the national wage, 25% more than anybody else in, in the nation. And what we've fallen back to now, 89%. That's not good enough. And we need more entrepreneurs, more innovators, and more champions of positive change to channel their energy into collectively driving our economy to the next level. And today is about, we're going to celebrate some successes, but we're also going to help more of you be successful in what you're doing because we need you to rise to the ranks of people like Octave Chanute with his glider in the dunes, or Judge Gary in terms of being one of the key founders for U.S. Steel, or Scott Benning with his plastic films that we use in our dishwashers, or the Kesslings over in La Porte. We have whiter and straighter teeth because of their innovations. Or Bud Ruby with his, San, uh, J. Ma Ruby with Sanzabel pants. Or go to the Barker Foundation, uh, the John Barker, the Barker Mansion in Michigan City. Freight rail cars. Those people were absolute titans of their industries. They made a huge difference, and they made it in Northwest Indiana. One of my favorites, right? One of the recent successes. The, the Prince of Confection, the King of Chocolate, the Earl of Swirl, the sweetest, most tastiest guy in all of Northwest Indiana, Scott Albanese, right? The Gummy Bear King. <laughs> so you can do it, and you can do it here in Northwest Indiana, and we're going to help you. And I want Deshaun to know that NIPSCO is going to be back here again next year, lauding you to get to the next level, because we need you. I'm getting too old. You guys got to come back and drive this place forward. So... Let the games begin. <laughs> I want to go ahead. I want to go ahead and thank Don right now for contributing. And all of you heard it that he's going to give us a million dollars for next year's competition. <laughs> you heard it, guys, right? You heard him. He said he's going to be here next year. One million dollars is coming to the big cell. So. I'm waiting for all of you to come here next year. Thank you, Don. I appreciate the million. I, I appreciate the one million dollars you're going to give us next year. Thank you, guys. We got to bring up uh, the person who welcomes everybody to this region, uh, Spiro Batistados from the South Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau. If you come into Northwest Indiana, he's got to welcome you. So we're going to let him welcome you. Well, I'll tell you what, following Don Babcock is never an easy job, but I, it refreshes me and it, it gives me great pleasure to hear him talk about hospitality operators because we've been innovating and creating new and exciting products in our industry our whole life. And when I say the hospitality industry, many people hear hospitals. No, that's not it. Hospitality, hotels, restaurants, Albanese nut and candy, casinos, parks. And we're innovators, and we're brighter and faster and more nimble than most because we manage the most perishable inventory on the planet. 
This hotel has 350 hotel rooms in it. If they're not sold tonight, they go to waste. There's no opportunity like a steel mill or a microchip factory or anywhere else to put those hotels or restaurant tables or gaming positions in inventory. We have to use them tonight, today, tomorrow, every day at 100% or they go to waste. So when you talk about innovation and you talk about Scott Albanese, one of the ways he became innovative was taking his little gummy bears, and I bet most of you don't know this, but there's one shift a week that runs specifically for children with cancer. They put brain meds into the little gummy bears, and that's how they get the kids to take their meds for cancer. Innovative, isn't it? Putting his stuff to use, making it better. That's who we are, and that's what it gives me great pleasure to work with 15,000 of the most nimble and creative marketing minds on the planet, and that's the South Shore's hospitality industry. It's well represented here today by people all across the spectrum, and it's my great pleasure to well, all of you that have come in from out of town, raise your hands, please. Welcome to Northwest Indiana. Welcome to the South Shore. Thank you for being here. You're going to have a lot of fun today. And by the way, just as fair warning, I'm the Simon Cowell of the judges. So I'll be sitting right in the first chair, and I'm the first guy that's going to go after you when you make your pitch. So don't be nervous. Have a great day. Welcome to Northwest Indiana. Don't let him fool you. He's like those gummy bears. He acts tough, but he's like, you know, melts in your hand. So, oh, he's a sweet guy. He just wants to act tough. Don't worry. So here's how it's going to work. I need, you, I need the first few people to line up here to the, uh, my right, your left. And you're going to get up on stage. You have a clock that's sitting right here. When your two minutes are up, we're going to shut off your mic. We're trying to make it fair for everybody. So you get strict two minutes. You get about 30 seconds to set up in between the voting. So what I would ask you to do is be quick to come up here to set up because once the timer goes, we're not resetting it. I apologize. The rules are the rules. In between the presentations, you're going to see a voting slide. You have two buttons that you need to worry about. One, you like the idea. It should move forward. Second button is, no, I don't think the idea has merit. We're going to hold back. And we're going to do that for every single presentation. You're going to see a PowerPoint light up, and you just click the button. We'll stop. We'll give about 20, 30 seconds. The next group will come up, and it's a smooth process. If there's any questions, I'm going to be here off to the side. But otherwise, this is your competition. Good luck. Do your best. So uh, the first, I believe it's Co. right? Is it Co? You need to start coming up here. And the first four or five people start lining up, and we'll get going. And um, again, I'll explain it a couple times, but it's a very simple process. Press 1 if you want the idea to go through. Press 2 if you don't think the idea should go through. OK, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stand here so everyone can see me. But uh, looks like I'm the guy that draw the short straw to go first, so lucky me. But uh, how's everyone doing today? I'm going to go ahead and start off. Uh, my invention is a super strap. And uh, just if you remember anything about this, I just want you to go ahead and remember that safety is going to be the, the future of innovation. Guys, go ahead and raise your hands when I ask you these questions. Who likes stuff more efficient? Who likes stuff faster? Who likes stuff safer? Who likes stuff more convenient? Man, you guys are a lot alike like me. OK, that's cool. All right, well, the super strap, what it is, is an automatic battery powered ratchet strap powered by a 24 volt battery, just like in a cordless drill. Say you're going down the road, ladies and gentlemen, and if I'm going to set a conventional strap in front of you, it's going to take you about three to four minutes to go ahead and get that set up and raveled up and get it going. Now, if I'm going to set the super strap in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take you about 30 seconds to get that thing raveled over. Whatever you're driving down the road, whatever freight you're hauling, your lawn mowers, your trucks, your trailers, your cars, your SUVs, for logistics companies hauling semis, hauling generators, it doesn't matter what it is. The safety strap's going to get it there a lot faster and a lot safer and a lot smoother. And the reason for that is, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to have three presets on the safety strap. One's going to be like your first amount of pressure. Second amount of pressure will be your preset number two. Third amount of pressure will be preset number three. Like if you guys have your lawnmower, it's going to be at 250 pounds. You just hit number one, it's going to automatically ratchet strap down there. A lot, lot faster than the conventional way. Now, what, why is it safe, ladies and gentlemen? Very, very simple. You're driving down the road in your semi. How many guys have been, and ladies and gentlemen, have, how, you, how, how many times have you guys got stopped while driving your truck or car because you're sitting behind a semi because his ratchet strap failed? And all of a sudden, you got about $5,000, $10,000, $100,000 worth of freight left on the ground because the strap came undone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the super strap's going to get rid of that. Super strap 
is going to be able to be compatible with an iPhone or an Android, the technology going to your phone. So if you're driving down the road and that strap starts to come undone, it's going to go beep, 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 well, whatever you got for you know, an alarm to set it off. It's going to alert the driver of that truck to pull over, get out of his vehicle, go down, ratchet that strap back up to not lose any more freight so no one gets hurt, so no one gets in car wrecks or any chase or anything. As a college student, the most significant obstacle to studying is distraction. Cell phones and laptops continually beckon while textbooks languish in backpacks. With Snapchat and Facebook just a tap or a click away, students procrastinate. Shwoop is a mobile app and website that aims to turn students' internet browsers and cell phones into their most essential study tools. It allows students to discuss confusing topics, ask questions of each other, study from a, an archive of previously asked questions, explanations, and answers before affirming their knowledge by answering the questions posed by their peers. Shroop will work because it puts the student study tools on the same accessibility level as their Facebooks. It allows students, the ones with the most relevant knowledge of the important material and classes, to help each other out, all while generating new content for each other as well as future users. The economic impact of Shroop will be significant because it allows students to understand information quickly and efficiently. It will simplify and enhance learning by allowing students to not only review, but master material. Shroop has the potential to generate a significant profit. With thousands of users spending hours of a time studying on our app, we will attract advertisement dollars targeting millennials with significant amounts of imminent disposable income, and a freemium model will also help generate additional revenue. We need your support to take Shroop to the next level. Though we have already developed a basic application design, a user interface, as well as some initial content, we need to refine and test our design, as well as develop an effective marketing strategy to attract users. If we have this, we will be able to develop a beta site that will be launched at Purdue University this coming fall, targeting various freshman classes. Thank you for your consideration. Hi, my name is Julie Perumba. The product that I'm excited about introducing to you is called the Roadie. This product can give you energy, save you money, and make your life easier. Have you ever left for work with a bottle of water in one hand and a coffee cup in another? If you're like me, you have. Didn't you wish you could carry both beverages in one container? This product can do just that. The provisionally patented roadie can be made of possibly lightweight steel, plastic, or recycled plastic. It is an interchangeable cylinder with two compartments that screw together easily and come apart. Each side is created to form a vacuum within the contents of the carrier and the outside air so that the hot stays hot and the cold stays cold. Although not pictured, each roadie comes with a silverware slot, a drink spout, and a strap to allow for, wait for it, easy carrying. <laughs> Every household is a potential user. My product can come in a small child size, a medium adult size, or a large size for a picnic or sporting event, with the average cost being around $25.99. Manufacturing costs average about $10 and $12 each, or between $10 and $12 each, and it is estimated that the total startup costs would be under $20,000. So who's ready to enjoy a day? Forget about lunch money or packing a water bottle. Simply swing the strap over your shoulder and take to the road. Hi, my name is Alessandra Ferreira. I am the owner of MedQuarters. I am also a medical student. Recently, my fellow classmates and I started looking for a place to stay during our away rotations. Away rotations are electives done at medical centers around the US. It's like an internship where you try out for a position. 
Both international and U.S. students will do approximately one to four of these away rotations that last approximately four to eight weeks. So basically, my friends and I were having a very difficult time finding a place to stay that was furnished near the medical center and only available for a few weeks. Hotels were too expensive. Other student housing websites cater to undergraduates and only list semester-long rentals, not to mention the creepy Craigslist post looking for pretty young lady to share a room. <laughs> Our attempts to find housing were time consuming and frustrating. This is where the idea for MedQuarters came about. We are initially catering only to medical students. However, MedQuarters can be expanded to include students from other graduate programs that also do away rotations, such as dental, optometry, and the pharmacology students. Um, we hope to launch the website in June of 2015. We also need help with legal services, and money to assist with the operational cost. What we need is an aggressive marketing strategy to gain a significant amount of users during the first year before we can monetize the website. In addition, mentorship is also the most valuable prize. In conclusion, I'd like to leave you with one thought, that there really is no other website out there like this. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Ryan. These are my partners, Jessica and Jacqueline. And we travel all the way from Montclair State University to present to you our startup, All Star Tailgates. That concept for All Star Tailgates developed back in September when we attended MetLife Stadium for a tailgate. Now preparing for this tailgate, we put, couldn't fit much items in our car. We had to take the table, strap to the top of my car, like we were going Christmas tree shopping. And we said to ourselves, you know, there had to be a better way to fill all the items and all the materials that we needed to have the best tailgate. This is when the concept of the pre-gamer was developed. The pre-gamer is an 80 quart cooler that has an adjustable table inside the cooler, and the table can adjust the legs to act as a, a cornhole table as well. Also within the cooler, you have three storage departments, a portable Bluetooth stereo, and a phone charger. Now, to validate our concept of uh, saving space within a cooler, we should reach out to a large demographic and ask, what's the largest problem you face when tailgating? And if you don't tailgate, why don't you tailgate? Soon we found out that you know, preparing for the tailgate was the largest and hardest part of going to a tailgate. So once we validated this concept that uh, the largest problem for a multi-billion dollar market was space and convenience, we knew that this was, product was a go. So we put the product into high gear, we developed a CAD, filed for a non-provisional patent, and launched the website. Within, that, within one week of launching the website, we received 100 pre-orders for our product. Now we come to you here to ask you to please stop tailgating like a rookie and tailgate like an all-star. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Levy and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pick Perfect. To all of you, I may look like a normal college student, but for the past eight years, I've been suffering from severe chronic Lyme disease. After my diagnosis, my doctor decided to put a pick line in my arm, which is a peripherally inserted central catheter from a vein in the arm directly to the heart, delivering daily IV medication. People with pick lines include those with cancer, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, and other infectious diseases. Last year alone, two million pick lines were inserted, and this is expected to grow to a $9 billion market by 2016. Now, from my personal experience, as well as our market research, we found that pick line users have three main concerns. First, current covers on the market slip down, causing the line to pull. Two, the, line, the pick line causes irritation to the skin. And three, the outward appearance of the pick line leaves patients feeling self-conscious. We've taken these three problems and put them into one great solution. First, our functional design has a two-way fold that we are currently working with a patent lawyer. It is reinforced on each end with elastic to prevent slipping. There's whole, the hole within the lining allows for treatment on the go while still, still concealing the pick line. You pull it back up and you're ready to go on your day. Two, our unique fabric has four-way stretch and is the only product on the market with antimicrobial material as well as four-way stretch and moisture wicking properties. And three, we offer a variety of colors and patterns for different lifestyles and people in the market. We've made a lot of progress along the way. We've invested $8,000 of our own money, as well as we've been accepted to this prestigious summer venture program at Babson College, where my team and I will be working full-time on this project. 
We've also launched our Kickstarter campaign, and with that money, we'll be going to first round production as of May 1st, and we will be selling soon. We plan to continue design and functional fascial medical covers for PICC line patients. Thank you. Good morning. I'm, I'm Matias, and I'm with Jazwick. I'd like to, I, some of you may know and, and some may not, but scientific research has shown that sitting too much is actually bad for your health. And um, the CDC even states that issues related to sitting are reaching pandemic proportions currently. It's actually an, a big issue. So what we did, let me tell you a story first. There's a girl, Lisa, and she has ADHD. She has serious issues at school, and we prototyped a standing desk for her, and it had an amazing result. Her teacher, Jack, told us that she could stay at her desk longer. And she told us that she felt like she could concentrate better while standing up. So Jack is now pushing the school to try and order these desks for the whole classroom. It could benefit every child. Now, this is the desk. I brought it. As you can see, it's, fair, it's fairly simple. And it moves up and down. It's height adjustable. Um, and it's, it's super price competitive. All materials are sustainably sourced. They have no harmful chemicals at all. The manufacturing, and that's the beauty of the whole concept, is done hyper-locally because we use digital files and a global network of high-tech manufacturers. So this could be produced here, could be produced in Akron, Ohio, anywhere. Lastly, I'd like to tell you that part of our profits will go into organizations that support education. And this way, we actually support our own market we're in. We grow our own market. So this is a, a whole model that keeps on giving. I'm Matthias. I'm with Jasmine. Dateline did a special that showed that young people do not wake up to the smell, uh, sound of smoke detectors. Um, there was a fire in New York two months ago where seven young people were killed. Uh, there wasn't a smoke detector in the room, but if there was, it might still have happened. When I was in high school, I wouldn't get up for my mother in the morning to go to school because I was out too, too late the night before, and she would take a squirt bottle, and she would squirt it in my face like that, and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I could, I could, I'm sorry, <laughs> I couldn't sleep through it. So I thought, make a smoke detector that had this in the room, and you could, you could design it for the room, like bunk beds would be like this, and then down there, two beds, it could go around like this, over a bed, like this, and you could have one in the kitchen where most fires start with a fire retardant above the stove like this. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, that's my time. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Ju Chi, and I am the founder and CEO of Hello Healthy. We are a workplace health and wellness provider. We help employees get healthy by sending. Uh, fitness classes to, to companies once a month, anything from in-office yoga to Zumba to massage therapy, and even healthy fruits and snacks. When I was growing up, I always wanted to be a superhero because I wanted to help people, but unfortunately, I never actually developed any superpowers, and I'm actually pretty breakable. Uh, but with Hello Healthy, I hope to actually help people uh, fight the scourge of chronic disease by helping them get healthier. Uh, most companies right now spend about 10% of their payroll on uh, health insurance because as the cost of healthcare keeps going up, things get more and more expensive. And most companies are looking for ways to really get their employees healthy to reduce that cost. What we do is work with companies to help their employees get healthier. Um, right now in the workplace industry, you have about 24% participation in all the activities that companies do, which is very, very low, partly because changing behavior is so difficult. 
our pilot with one Chicago company had over 90% participation because we have three simple uh, design principles. We make everything fun, we make everything simple, and we use a habit formation process that we developed in conjunction with an expert from Stanford University. Our pilot with just one Chicago company had uh, net, us, net us about 5,000 in revenue in about five months, and we are looking to use this to expand. Businesses love us because we take care of everything, and employees love us because we basically give them the same perks that you get at Google. And uh, finally, we're looking to partner with Big Brother Big Sisters and the wine. Hello, my name is Don Long, and I've been a wrestling coach uh, for 10 years or so. I've been wrestling my whole life. But this is my idea here is about, about light sight. If you just went off, well, uh, what happens is in wrestling match, what you see over there on uh, mat, multiple mats is used um, that there's multiple light, uh, buzzers and whistles and stuff. And sometimes it confuses the wrestlers and the refs and sometimes, and it causes premature stoppage of the play, you know, the wrestling match and stuff, and it can confuse, a lot of confusions going on in there. And uh, also there's a, there's a towel boy that comes in, usually I don't know if anybody's familiar with wrestling, but there's a towel boy that comes in with the last, last 10 seconds and sometimes and taps the, rest, uh, the ref on the back lips to know there's 10 seconds that your buzzer is going to go off. So he has got a warning, but they're also in harm's way because in wrestling there's a lot of moving, you know, they're sprawling and there's a lot of stuff that pe people do that they get hurt. Also, it's clock management. You know, uh, when there's a lot of mats going on at one time, that you don't know what uh, what what clock shears up in the the thing because there's a lot of score clocks going on. So this when the buzzer goes, the light goes. You just know it stop. Don't stop on any. Wait. Just wrestle to the the light. Um, also, when this is, goes along with the handicap, you know people that can't hear, they hear a whistle blow or a buzzer stop. It's right there for them. And also the vision people, if they're looking for a clock, they can't see, but they see a light, they know when to stop. Um, as a wrestler, as a coach, I mean, sometimes you know that you don't know if the clock's running or not. I've, I've coached and they've been wrestling for 15, 20 seconds and the clock hasn't ran. Well, there's a white light that goes on when it's clock's running and the red's when it's not running. So it lets you know uh, what's going on with that. Um, let's see. The, what I did is embed the lights into the seams of the mat, that way it, it, it's out of bounds too for it can't affect the light with the, the wrestler. Um, I guess that's it. I'm Carolyn Fontleroy Talaferro, and I'm a retired middle school math teacher. It's a difficult thing to be. Uh, I created a math game because I found I could encourage my students if I turned it into a game. It's called Pythagorummy. It's to teach the Pythagorean theorem. I recognize in the movie, The Wizard of Oz, the wizard encouraged the scarecrow by giving him a diploma to tell him he was intelligent, tell him he was smart because he had brains. Well, the scarecrow misquoted the Pythagorean theorem immediately afterwards. So it's not, it's not perfection, but you have to recognize that it's not how smart you are, it's how you are smart. It's not how intelligent you are, it's how you are intelligent. And there is a theory that there are eight different intelligences and you get a few of, if not all of them. And if you teach to a behavioral learning styles, then you can get this point, this uh, theory across. Um, the, the Pythagorami appeals to six of those different intelligences and consequently the learning, the learning uh, style. This game encourages you to find three numbers in a deck of cards that complete the theorem. You need to know that 614,000 middle school math teachers have to teach this theorem. And this is a way of differentiating the instruction. I don't want you to work hard, so don't work harder. Play smarter. Play Pythagorummy. Hi, everyone. I'm Gamal. 
and I want to tell you about a little issue. Um, you need experience to get a job, and you need a job to get experience. And some students gain their experience by taking on a leadership position at their school or by learning new skills in their free time. However, for the 71% of undergrads working part-time and the 20% of students working up to 35 hours a week, it's simply not possible for them to participate in those enriching experiences. And with a job pays the, that pays the bills, as some of you might know, it's hard to show your best self on a resume. Now, we know these students work hard in their classes, so we created Squire to bridge the gap between classroom, or classwork and the workforce. Squire is a learning tool free for students and professors to use in the classroom. Classroom discussion and Q&A become centralized on Squire. Now, Squire is super simple to use. You have a question after class, you log into Squire. You post your question on Squire. Other students or the professor reply with an answer to your question. You thank them for their help, boosting their Squire score. It's as easy as that. Now, Squire, the Squire score gamifies Q&A and discussions, encouraging students to help each other even more. In addition, we'll have an optional recruiting platform that students can join to find internships, where they can use their Squire score to, generate, to demonstrate their abilities beyond the resume. Now, we've already built the first version of Squire, and it's currently helping over 150 students get their questions answered and demonstrate their abilities. We need your help to grow so that we can match the hardest working students, uh, we can help the hardest working students prove their best self to their future employers. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Aubrey Donnellan, co-founder, CTO of Maestro. And this is my partner, Trina. Uh, in 2014, Nielsen conducted a consumer behavior study. 50% of respondents quoted that they were not happy with their health. Um, and the driving factor here was that they don't have time to care about their health. So we've met in business school, we go to the University of Chicago, and we decided to tackle this very difficult problem by building the Maestro machine and food company. So what is the Maestro? Maestro is a smart countertop appliance that uses induction heating to boil, roast, and steam up to three separate meal components simultaneously. Now what that means is that the Maestro can cook a complete customized meal in around 30 minutes all by itself. So now, similar to how Keurig went to market with the K-Cup, we're planning on selling our customers fresh proteins, grains, and veggies that are going to be specially packaged so that they can be scanned in, read, and cooked to perfection by our maestro. Um, imagine this. Lemon rosemary chicken, quinoa with custom spice blend, and roasted Brussels sprouts with Parmesan cheese. That's just one recipe of many that our in-house chef Helen is preparing for our launch. And all of our recipes are going to have fresh, unprocessed ingredients and fall between 500 and 700 calories, making them a great, healthy option without sacrificing taste. So Trina's going to tell you more about our market opportunity and progress to date. Uh, we have a working prototype and are actively testing it with potential customers. We've already spoken to over 400 potential customers through interviews and a paid marketing research study and have secured financing through multiple startup programs. We know the time is right for Maestro because the food tech industry alone raised $2.4 in financing last year, and the smart kitchen appliance market is expected to go to $10 billion by 2020. Our plan is to launch locally in Chicago in Q1 of 2016. We've done detailed financial projections, and we believe that our company can reach up to $150 million in revenue and 120,000 customers by year five. Good morning. My name is Shakina Bullock, and I'm the inventor of Get Hooked. All of us have inquired um, the strength of a toddler. They seem to be very strong. The Get Hooked was actually invented because my daughter, will actually, within her independence, wanted to um, always hang up her towel. But what happened was that the pressure that the child, because children do not know their own um, pressure or their own strength, it actually tore the um, hook off the wall. So I invented Get Hooked. It is an adjustable door hook that will go on any door. It will lock in place, and then you place it on your door as such. 
um, get hooked will fit into any high end um, high end hotels. You can also it's also travel friendly. You can take it to the gym with you. If you are wheelchair bound, you can also use that to adjust it and it'll stay in place. We all know that adjusting hooks on the walls can be time consuming and also um, uh, financial as well because once the hook may fall off, you will have to replaster and maybe paint the entire room. So with Get Hooked, you won't have to have those those many those many expenses. You can use it in your closets, even in your kitchens for your dorms of people that may be going to college, and also in the gym room and locker. And um, that's all I actually have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
parents around the world dread cleaning their children's high chairs, car seats, and strollers. The problem is the nasty nooks and crannies with last month's crumbs and spills. And let's not mention the messy cleanup if your child is car sick or has a potty accident. What's worse is most parents are unfamiliar with the study conducted by the University of Birmingham, which revealed that children's car seats are twice as dirty as public toilets. That's gross. But we're here to change that. We introduce social conscious cleaning with our product, Clinks. Clinks are environmentally friendly, disposable, adhesive, absorbent protective covers that allow you to clean in 40 seconds or less with zero chemicals, zero cleaning products, and zero scrubbing, which protects your child's health and our environment, and it also saves you time and money. We promote social conscious cleaning by allowing you to help other parents and children in underdeveloped areas right from the comfort of your home. One thing we're extremely proud of is our mission, which is buy with kindness, give with love. When you purchase our covers, we donate another to a family in need in areas such as Guatemala, India, and Africa. In these areas, our covers completely change day-to-day -day life as they are used as diaper liners, absorbent cloth, and cleaning towels. As you can see, we've already built a rough prototype to test functionality, but with your help, we can design and provide beautiful covers that save our children, our planet, and reshape the lives of others. The greatest threat to American national security is not terrorism. It's the fact that 50% of American university students fail to ever graduate. That means that America only achieves half of its potential, and we fall behind among the nations of the world. Ohio State University points out that meaningful peer relationships are the leading factor in college retention. And you've all experienced it. You're in a lecture hall class. As Soon as class is over, those other 200 people go their own way. And then it's 2 AM, and you're cramming for that midterm, and you're thinking, gee, it'd be nice to have someone to work with. Or when you get stuck on problem number five, you're thinking, I wish I had a way to get a quick answer or to get some help to get beyond this challenge. And the great irony is that all 200 of your classmates are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, cramming for that midterm at 2 AM. That's why I created the Smarty Pants app. I believe that every student should be empowered to invite anyone in their class to a study group with just three taps on their mobile phone or get a quick answer at 2 AM when you're cramming for that midterm. On the back end, we license our data to universities to identify which particular students are at risk of being retained. This is important because a mere 40 students retained is $1.5 million in revenue for a college. And for a student to graduate means you're gonna make $18,000 more per year. The Smarty Pants app is a college retention solution. Quick answers with three, uh, quick answers at any hour, three taps on your mobile phone gets you in a study group, and then data to retain college students. Three months on the App Store, we have 20,000 downloads and a partnership with DeVry University, the second largest college in the country. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jason and I'm excited to introduce Ping, where customers and vendors discover each other the moment they're five blocks apart. Ping began six months ago when we discovered that college students and millennials had no way to know which eateries and retailers were worth shopping at within five blocks of any Chicago location. At the same time, those vendors had no way to know which types of ads really drew in those young customers. This discovery led us to create Ping, and since it's already built as an iPhone app with deals running on it, allow me to show you a real life example of Ping in action. Right here is Charlie, a customer. He's bumming around Chicago at 6 p.m. and he's hungry. As he crosses the street, something magical happens. He gets a ping or push notification telling him this, three free cookies at Jimmy John's for every large sandwich you buy, now until 9 p.m. Fascinated, Charlie clicks it, entering the app. The first thing he gets is an already highlighted route from his present location to the Jimmy John's. 
So getting there is automatically a piece of cake. Well, in this case, a piece of cookie. Meanwhile, Ping tells Jimmy John's, a partnered vendor, three crucial things. That Charlie got their ping, that Charlie viewed and clicked it, and that Charlie actually came to Jimmy John's because of that ping. At the end of the day, Charlie gets food without having to think about it, and Jimmy John's makes money without having to worry about it. A century ago, the philosopher Alfred Whitehead said, civilization advances, as we extend the number of operations, we can perform without thinking about them. Ping makes discovering vendors effortless for customers, while it makes discovering customers a piece of cookie for vendors. And that is our vision. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Michael Vander Sandy, and I, I'm thrilled to be here, and I thank you for having me here. I am with a new nonprofit called Inspired Kids, and our first program is Inspired Magazine, a remarkable magazine that's 100% written by kids. On the screen behind you, you'll see covers of the eight magazines that we've published in the last year, and they're all filled with just great content from kids all over the country. We've featured hundreds of kids from Indiana and around the country and have enjoyed nearly everybody just loving our idea and now our magazine. Wow, what a great idea is a very common, common comment that, that we have heard. We believe that when we publish kids' work, we're having an immediate impact on their self-confidence, their self-esteem, and their self-awareness, which is why we're doing what, what uh, we're doing. We've enjoyed overwhelming positive response to our efforts and are enjoying working and partnering with many throughout the Indianapolis area, including the Children's Museum, Connor Perry, the Indiana Fever, Indy 11, the Peers Project, all the YMCAs, all the public libraries, Indian IUPUI, and a number of other organizations. New plans uh, for this coming summer include a balloon launch at an upcoming um, the Indy 11 game, a anti-bullying contest with the Indiana Fever, and we are in plans to open um, to launch Inspired San Diego in the next three to five months. While we're here competing for the big sell, we're also here letting all of you know about the wonderful opportunity for kids that you know, including yours, that we can we can we can publish them. So please let all the kids you know, all the organizations that you know that are working with kids. I have copies of magazines for everybody here, if you would like, and I look forward Good morning. When was the last time you left an auto repair shop completely happy about how much you had to pay there and how long you had to wait there? We are Autobots. We connect car owners with certified mobile mechanics who will come to your house to repair or service your car. Repairing your car is convenient and easier than ever using Autobots.com or the mobile app. Select the car and the service you need and you will get an instant, clear, and a fair price. Once you're ready to book your appointment, pick a time and a location. We will match you up with the mobile mechanic near you. On the day of the service, the mechanic comes to you and service your car while you enjoy your favorite TV show or you finish up that assignment at work. Did you also know that by working directly with mechanics, customers save 20 to 50% while the mechanics can make up to three times of what they're making today. Our network of mechanics are the same ones who works at the shop or dealerships who choose to earn some extra money on the side. And they go through a series of certification and validation process like a full background check before we onboard them. Our mechanics arrive at the customer location with all the necessary tools and quality parts and get the job done in a professional and courteous manner. All services booked through Autobots comes with a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty. At Autobots, we're a team of engineers and entrepreneurs with a single mission in the $70 billion industry to make the auto repair affordable and convenient for everyone. So next time you need an oil change or change a brake pad or any service for your car, hop onto autobots.com and feel the difference. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Ryan Boken. I'm a senior at Purdue Calumet, and my idea is called Nerdy Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Nerdy, de <laughs> Nerdy Deeds will serve as a new way to help people with technology. We will eliminate the hassle of getting technical support through an in-home consultation by one of our nerds. We will resolve a wide range of issues, from something simple like connecting your devices to Wi-Fi to more difficult issues like removing viruses from your desktop or laptop computers. We will not only fix problems, we will teach our customers and educate our customers on how to better use their devices and utilize their devices. Our market consists of <clears throat> tech users of all ages, but especially middle-aged to elderly people. Since I was little, I've been helping my family with problems like these and friends, <clears throat> but not everyone has that option or someone around to help them out. Let's face it, the options available today are pretty awful when it comes to technical support. <clears throat> You have two options. You could call customer service, which can be a nightmare, and Geek Squad is very expensive, plus it's only for Best Buy's customers. We will plan to hire a network of local college students and anyone who is technically skilled. <clears throat> How much they work will be up to them. Um, sorry. <laughs> So um, how much they work will be up to them. For example, say Susan calls us about a problem with her laptop. We then post her issue on our internal employee website, and the first nerd to log on and pass a quick quiz related to her issue gets her appointment. This way, she gets the best person for that particular problem, and our employees can work when they have the free time. To give our customers peace of mind, we will send them an email or text with a name and a picture of who's coming out to help them. Thank you very much. Hello. <clears throat> Tom Kutnella's last game started like any other. He walked in the field with his friends and family cheering him on. But that night, tragedy struck. He suffered a concussion, and that day, he left the field in a stretcher, and he died three days later in the hospital. There are 1.1 million high school football players in this country. The CDC estimates next year, or next season alone, 10% of them will get a concussion. That's 110,000 students. The scariest statistic done by the American College of Medicine states that 85% of those 110,000 students, that's nearly 94,000 students, will have a concussion and go undiagnosed. The issue isn't having isn't the issue at hand is not having proper diagnostic tools on the sideline. In fact, the medical professionals and athletic trainers on the sideline are our best bet to detect concussions to begin with. No, the issue at hand, the reason these numbers are so high, is not knowing when to put our football our students in front of these athletic trainers, taking them off the field. There are twenty two players on, a football field, or on the field at a time, and countless impacts that go on from play to play. A coach can't keep up with all of them at once. My name is Hanish. And I'm Joe. And we're Sudden Impact Analytics. We're here to tackle this epidemic head on. We're developing a chip that athletes attach to their mouth guards, and it notifies their coach and parents in real time when they suffer a potentially concussive impact. That allows them to be actionable and know to pull that player out and test them on the sidelines. We've been working on this for the last seven months. We've had a lot of technical success so far. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Clark, and I'm here presenting on behalf of Soterius Medical. We've created a novel stem cell delivery device that's gonna revolutionize the way stem cell therapies are delivered to solid organs. Stem cell therapies are an explosive area of growth in medicine. The industry is currently valued at $5.6 billion, and it's growing at over 13% each year. In fact, right now, there are over 4,600 clinical trials underway in the U.S. alone, which is really, really exciting. The problem is that nobody's figured out a good way to deliver these stem cell therapies to solid organs. Right now, physicians are just using a standard needle and syringe, but that technology poses two problems. The first problem is post-injection cell viability. The forces involved in using a needle and syringe can literally shred stem cells apart. Uh, literature suggests that these viability losses can approach 40%, which has a huge impact on treatment efficacy. The second problem is the risk of contamination. In the current procedure, physicians are forced to actually expose the cells to air, which increases the risk that they get contaminated, 
and which in turn increases the risk that the patient will suffer an infection. That's obviously costly for patients and providers alike. Our device, on the other hand, solves both of those problems. We've created a very innovative injection system that uh, offers very precise control over the factors that affect cell viability. And the entire injection system is one closed loop. So there's no risk of contamination, and there's a dramatically decreased risk of infection. Uh, over the last six months, we've been working closely with a team of physicians at Johns Hopkins Hospital, uh, as well as other MDs and PhDs all over the country to refine and optimize this product. As investors, we're offering you a chance to get in on the ground floor of one of the most explosive areas in medicine, one of the most explosive areas of growth. Uh, and that's something that my team and I could not be more excited about. Thank you. So the most common injury in the entire human body is a lateral ankle sprain. And there are many products out there that prevent ankle sprains, but that's all they do is prevent. Well, my product also prevents ankle sprains, but it's the only one of its kind to instantly take away the pain and cut the healing time in half. With my doctorate background in physical therapy, I've taken a well-researched and proven treatment technique and have applied it within a patent-pending product that consumers could potentially pick up at their local drugstore, sports store, or have ready to use on the sidelines. How my product works is it applies a constant, adjustable posterior pressure to the outside of the lower leg. Well, located there is a group of muscles whose sole responsibility is to know where the ankle's at in space. So by heightening the sense and the reaction time of these muscles, we can create more stability of the ankle joint itself and thus prevent the ankle sprain from ever occurring. Well, this posterior pressure also has another characteristic to it. When a lateral ankle sprain occurs, the fibula bone on the outside of the lower leg gets displaced forward. Well, when, that, when that happens, we have pain, we have, when we have pain, we have decreased strength, inc decreased range of motion, and most importantly, the ability to not bear weight on that lower ankle joint. Why? Because it hurts. So by pushing this bone back in place, or the fibula bone on the outside of the lower leg, we are able to instantly take away the pain. Well, by doing so, this is one less thing the body has to do in order to heal itself. And by doing that, we literally cut the healing time of an ankle sprain in half, as a lateral ankle sprain can last anywhere between one to six weeks. This product works so well that someone can come out from their activity or sports event, put it on, and get back to their event as if the ankle sprain had never occurred. It works that well at taking away the pain. It could also potentially save hundreds of thousands of dollars for consumers to avoid seeking out multiple medical professional help, other alternatives such as crutches, who, let's face it, or let's face it, they can be used, I'm sorry, let's face it, they can be clumsy or clumsy to use or take up a lot of space and they're very costly. If you have any other questions, please feel free to stop by. I will answer any questions for you. Try the product on for yourself and feel the difference. Brace the play. Good morning. I'm Tom Ryan, CEO with Thermatome. Thermatome is a product that will eliminate the need for radiation treatment post breast cancer surgery. If you remember anything when you leave here today, I want you to remember this. With a 15 minute treatment using Thermatome's device, millions of women could be spared the cost and side effects of radiation, several weeks of radiation treatment and the U.S. healthcare system could be saved $7 billion each year. Most women, or a majority of women who have breast cancer are eligible for lumpectomy surgery. Lumpectomy removes the tumor while leaving the breast intact and at the same time, and is followed by typically followed by several weeks of, of radiation treatment. Thermatome eliminates the need for radiation treatment by heating the tissue around the lumpectomy cavity following surgery. So our device is a simple balloon catheter device like this that is placed in the surgical cavity following surgery while the patient is still under anesthesia and heated to 90 degrees centigrade, which will kill any cancer remaining in the, in the margin surrounding the cavity. This is um, a 15-minute treatment costing $5,000 versus a six-week treatment costing a potentially $45,000. Thermatome is in the process of raising capital for its first equity round of, of investment funding, and we ask you to become involved in that as investors. Thank you for your time.
Hello, my name is Lawrence Harris, and I'm the founder of The College Factory. I'm a current master's student at the University of Pennsylvania, studying for my master's of science and education. Uh, but prior to being a student at Penn, I was a college advisor at Clark Central High School in Athens, Georgia, and I worked as a college advisor for a foundation in Atlanta working with low-income and disadvantaged youth. So many of you may have heard the recent praises for the United States that we're at our highest high school graduation rate ever. 81%, it's great. But besides that, uh, college attendance and college degree attainment is very low in our country, especially for first-generation, low-income minority youth. As a first-generation student myself, coming from a low-income household, I can tell you the college admissions process was very difficult. High school counselors don't have enough time to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the National Center for Education Statistics published that with a ratio of 450 to 1, counselors get maybe 20 minutes of school year with a student. That's not dealing with emotional issues, behavior, foster care, anything like that. So I came up with the idea for the College Factory. The College Factory will it operate as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and what we do is we establish college and career centers in low-income areas. Now, these centers we built with local partnerships, doing with local school districts, universities and colleges, as well as um, community-based organizations. It'll be staffed with college, college and career advisors who will most likely be current college students who can come and will be paid at a part-time rate to work as advisors with uh, low-income disadvantaged youth. But this center is unique in the fact that it's built just for students. We have a cafe, I have a lounge, computer lab, so it's kind of creating this culture of a place where students want to go after school to work on their future. We use three different uh, facets of technology. We use technology to send notifications to the students, such as, don't forget your application is due next week. And we also try to include parents, such as, hey, uh, congratulations, your daughter just applied to Purdue Calumet. We also have a big piece in the community, so the idea is to send our advisors into the community where they can work with adults who may have not gone to college, so they can learn, know what it takes to become an adult learner, enroll in college part-time or full-time. Uh, and also our third piece is accessibility. So our services are offered after school and on weekends when students can actually come so we're not interrupting class instruction time. Thank you, that's the College Factory. Men, how many of you have seen your precious closet space dwindle over the years between the clothes, purses, belts, jewelry, shoes, and boots, your side of the closet, Never had a chance. And why does she need so many shoes and boots anyways? Most of them look the same, except they're in different colors. Women, I understand. But men, I'm here to help you today regain some of that closet space and help your wallet in the process. Introducing Allie's Boots. The first custom designed rubber boot with removable outer wraps. These wraps are reversible too, So you have several different designs, all in one set. You just switch out the wrap and voila, you have a whole new design. No more needing to buy several different pairs of boots to match all those outfits. Allie's Boots does it all in one. Our wraps are waterproof, so get them dirty and clean up is a breeze. A year ago, all we had was an idea and this homemade prototype. Today, we have hundreds of unique, high quality boots en route from a manufacturer. We're also creating jobs here in Northwest Indiana, sorry, Northwest Indiana by employing stay-at-home moms to help us assemble these adorable wraps. And just wait till you hear what women are saying about them. Oh my goodness, I love Allie's boots. I wish I had a pair. That's right, you heard her. Women love them. So women, you no longer need to look for a solution to your closet space problems. The solution is right here. And men, take my advice and make your wallets happy, your wife and daughters happy, and give that closet space the boot. Allie's boots, that is. Thank you. Every year, there are more diabetes fatalities than homicides. There are 30 million people living in the US with diabetes, undiagnosed cases, and diagnosed cases. And poor medication management is a culprit. This is a $100 billion problem to our economy, but it's an even greater problem to physicians and patients. Mobile Meds is an innovative mobile app that gives physicians an insight into the world of how patients take their medications every single day. Physicians create a profile for diabetic patients with the top five meds that they take every single day. Patients are able to log on remotely, simply hitting yes or no, 
for medications taken that have been identified. This mobile app allows physicians to trend in efficiencies, medications taken, medications not taken. This is huge. It also allows other members of the caretaker team, like educators and social workers, to be clued into the process. Mobile meds completely demystifies the struggle that happens every single day when patients decide to take which pill after pill that they need to. Maybe this isn't a silver bullet, but projected cost savings is approximately 20%, which is a $20 billion savings to our economy as well as private insurers. And it's also another positive step in increasing mortality for diabetic patients. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. How many here have jaw problems or tightness of the face or muscles? Well, I'm Brian Poocher, and I'm the inventor of the jaw jack. It's a lightweight, portable device that you can stick in your mouth and give yourself a rehab and kind of massage the muscles in the face to make yourself feel a lot more loose. The man here in my PowerPoint is Guy Vafiatis. He's a father of two, a 24-year veteran of the military, and a hardworking union man. Six years ago, on July, this July 3rd, he got into a car accident on I-65. A drunk driver was going the wrong way and hit him head on. His face went through the steering wheel and he had multiple fracture wounds in the face. His jaw had to be reconstructed and wired shut. For six weeks, when he finally was freed from the bound wires, he was able to open his jaw about a half an inch, making it very difficult to eat, talk, or yawn. So that's when I de developed the jaw jack. I saw him performing his, his old method of the tongue depressors, which he would have to stack about 18 tongue depressors, and they get dirty and they get waterlogged with your saliva. That's not very sanitary either. And he would shove these into the backs of his jaw and just try to stretch the one side. Well, this would cause a tweak or a twist, and it would actually cause him more pain on the other side. So I saw him performing this, and there had to be a better way. So I invented the jaw jack. It's lightweight. It's portable, it's smaller than your phone, and, it, and it's very easy to use. You, the user will stick it in their mouth and then increase their, their liking of the mobility and kind of provide a stretch for their jaw. They can mas also massage the muscles and it rotate the neck as well, and it will also loosen up anything. Um, yesterday, I had a good friend come in, and he's part of the rugby team here in Hobart, and he tried my device, and I, I'm not kidding you, he thought everybody on the team could use it with them headbutting each other and getting you know, facial fractures and, and uh, also hurting themselves. So he believes that this would work, and I, and I hope that everybody else here will believe the same thing with me. Thank you. So imagine for a moment that you have a small landscaping company and you want to purchase a Reading lawnmower. This Reading lawnmower will allow you to double your income and to uh, be more effective and efficient with your work. Now, you go into Home Depot and you purchase that Reading lawnmower. When you go up to the counter, there's a point of sale opportunity for you to finance that purchase. This is provided by a third party, typically like a, G a GE Capital or something of that nature. Now, GE Capital has gone into Home Depot and provided Home Depot with the training tools and resources to offer that opportunity to you. For 450 million rural farmers around the world, that opportunity doesn't exist. I represent Axios Impact Investments, and we, are cr we have created a financial model that allows us to be the GE Capital to local organizations in developing markets. Now, for the last two years, my team and I have been researching investment opportunities in the agricultural space. And what we found is that there are hundreds of local organizations that provide income-producing assets to farmers all over the world. The challenge, however, lies in financing. Microfinance has had its successes, but rural financing continues to be incredibly difficult. So what we've done is we've come up with a system that allows us to go and train and provide tools and resources to these local organizations, enabling them to act as the first line of due diligence and package together groups of borrowers. We've also seen that there's a $13.5 trillion that have been poured into social impact investing over the last 10 years. This is a huge tidal wave of people that are looking for social impact to match their financial returns. Our team has over 10 years of experience in credit risk analysis in the banking industry and investing in, impact, in uh, international development spaces. And we are currently partnered with a group in Uganda that is offering a, a unique uh, irrigation system to farmers over there. With your support, we'll be able to build out that pilot even further and continue to build upon our impact in Uganda. 
At Axios, we see a world where point-of-sale financing is making a huge difference for farmers all over that world and allowing 450 million farmers to pull themselves out of the traps of poverty. Thank you. How many of you in this room are sick and tired of being sick and tired when you come home from a vacation or a business trip? Or we get halfway through vacation and our kids are sick and we're like, oh, must be the airline or something we picked up along the way. Well, I want you to know that there might be another culprit. Hi, my name is Lisa DeBoer. I'm the president of Peds R Us Medical Education. For the past 15 years, my husband and I have been traveling all over the world teaching pediatric emergency medical education. And one universal fact, in every single hotel room that we go into, there is a nice, clean remote control sitting next to the bed ready for us to use, right? Or maybe not. If you've seen any of the studies, and there are a lot of them out there, will tell you that these remote controls that we're picking up and flipping channels and then eating are teeming with bacteria. Everything from staph, strep, E. coli, fecal matter, yuck. Seriously, there's got to be something better. And really, what are the solutions that they're giving us? Bring a plastic bag or a plastic cover or bring your own sanitizing room, uh, wipes. Really, I don't want to have to worry about that. So let's come up with something better, and that's what we've done. My business partner, Bernadette, and I have come up with the clean remote tote. This system will make it easier for housekeepers to actually clean and sanitize these remote controls. We can get 99% of the bacteria that are on these remote controls. All we have to do is simply take one of our remote control wipes that will kill 99% of the bacteria. The housekeepers can wipe these down, put them back into the clean remote tote so that they can be put next to our bed so we know that they're clean. There's also an extra sanitizing wipe so you can refresh Fresh it anytime. So that is what we want to get into every single hotel. Imagine a fast casual restaurant that offers you a growing experience that gets you involved with different culture by harmonizing the people and the community together. That will integrate social activities with local ethnic enclaves. And um, that will combine with local uh, international students, organizations to help display uh, different international themes through certain months to show its appreciation. I present to you the Momo Bar. What it does is it actually uh, gets you socially aware about social responsibilities that offers an opportunity to allow you to pay, have a pay it for opportunity that allows you to pay pre-purchase a meal that gives back to the homeless. Uh, the Momo Bar We'll have, the Momo Bar is a South Asian cuisine that specializes in Nepalese dumplings that will take the, take the traditional Indian Nepalese cuisine and put it into a fast, casual setting. Uh, the Momo Bar will tap into a competition that has, or will tap into a market that has no competition. It will be located in areas that have positive responses to fast casual restaurants. And uh, by combining the community together with the restaurant, I call this the namaste experience. Namaste means to recognize a being. And once you recognize the momo, you recognize the world. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Cooper and I'm a student at Purdue Calumet. As one of millions of singles who has braved the world of online dating, I know that much can be done to improve the online relationship experience. Therefore, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Get Together. 
Get Together is an online relationship development service that supports users in building several kinds of meaningful relationships, from weekend hangouts and friendships to long-term romantic relationships. I will focus on three of Get Together's most valuable and distinct features. Feature one, the unique matching system. Contrary to existing relationship services, Get Together uses an intuitive system that pairs people according to their rankings of various interests, such as mu music, movies, and sports. Each user scores interests between negative 10 and positive 10. When two users rank in interests very similarly, their compatibility score will be significantly higher. On the other hand, when two users score an interest very differently, their compatibility score will increase slightly and maybe not even at all. Higher scores indicate more compatible matches. Second, users may look for matches within the four categories of relationships that are presented on screen. Most competing services either focus exclusively on dating or group everybody together without considering their relationship goals. Get Together solves this situation by solely matching individuals with others who want the same type of relationship. Lastly, breaking the, breaking the ice at the start of any relationship can be difficult, but Get Together will help matches take that first and most important step. Get Together analyzes users' shared interests and can suggest activities that both people are likely to enjoy. Possible suggestions could include live concerts, restaurants, and professional sports, to name a few. Thank you so much for your time. Get Together has so much more to offer, and I look forward to sharing more exciting features with you in the second round. My name is Aaron Wolf, and along with my two partners, we are here to present to you Job Scholar. If you could, please think back to your college years. As college students, we have felt the pain of financial stress in our undergraduate years. Working part-time jobs has been the norm for us, hoping that we can earn enough to pay for school while enjoying the best years of our lives. However, working relatively long hours for minimum wage doesn't provide the economic value we need and takes away the necessary study time for us to reach our full potential in the classroom. And we are not alone. According to the National Center of Education Statistics, there are roughly 21 million college students in America, nearly 60% of which receive little to no financial assistance from home. Enter Job Scholar. Through our designed website and subsequently developed mobile application, we bring flexible employment to college students and for a respectable wage. Instead of working for hours at a time and in the evenings due to our class schedules, students can work at times convenient for them. They will set their own schedules while striking a balance between academics, financial safety, and the enjoyment of their college years. We do this by connecting with the campus community. Those who are physically unable or too busy to take care of their home, as well as local businesses, will post jobs on the site. The listed jobs can range from yard mowing, snow shoveling, leaf raking, all the way to skilled labor like IT assistance, all of which we believe can be great resume builders for students. The site mandates a ranking process, supplying an accountable and reliable workforce. In addition to serving students, our site provides value to the university, community, and local economy. Universities struggle with retention because students do not have the financial means to stay or because students do not feel connected. Our service directly combats both of these reasons. It also extends the university's reach into the community. Community members are able to get work done for an affordable price while simultaneously supporting students, and the local economy will prosper due to students spending their money at local businesses. After meeting with web developers, attorneys, and university officials, we are $25,000 away from launching this service. So please help us extend an A-plus experience to campus communities. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am a CEO and founder of DaycareDiscover.com. I'm also a new mother. Today, you can practically find anything online, but not the important information that you need about daycare centers, which make daycare search a long and frustrating process. As a new mother, like many other new parents, I spend endless hours trying to play phone tag with daycare center, being distracted at work, taking time off to tour centers, but only find disappointment. An early childhood education professor shared her frustrating story on New York Times titled, if a daycare expert cannot find a good one, can anyone? We envision a world where parents spend less than four hours find a suitable daycare for their family. They will search on daycarediscover.com, read the reports and reviews, 
toward the top centers, reserve a spot. It's that easy. Daycare Discover is making this a reality by creating a comprehensive database with all the important information for parents to make a decision. It is searchable by multiple criteria because every family needs are unique. We're also working with daycare centers to create an algorithm to forecast availability, which is only known a, a month in advance, despite the fact that the wait list is up to a year long. Today, we may ask if an expert on daycare cannot find a good one, can anyone? Tomorrow, we'd be able to answer in confidence, anyone can, on daycarediscover.com. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sean Mayberry. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a friend or family member to pass away suddenly? The answer is most likely yes. The fact is that over 56 million people die every year, and the cost of funerals are steadily rising and can cost anywhere between eight to $10,000. I've created Solus, a solution to help families cut funeral costs by providing them with a platform where they can choose from hundreds of custom obituary program templates for their family member or loved one based on their interests, style, and hobbies. Families will not only be able to download a PDF version of the program and print it at their own convenience, but they will also have the option to send it to a local, eco-friendly printer in their neighborhood. In addition, Solus provides the ability to email it to friends and family that aren't able to make it to the service so they won't feel left out and they can share it on social media. At the end of the day, we know that everyone's life matters. Families should be able to celebrate their loved one's life with dignity and pride. And unfortunately, funeral homes have failed to take advantage of new technology, and it spikes funeral costs. I've, I've created a solution that adds speed and efficiency to a process most of us dread. Families will be able to Families will be able to utilize technology to make a more efficient process. Solus is a combination of soul, the essence of life, and solace, which is comfort. Solus is DIY, the do-it-yourself obit. Behold, the first game changer, the innovative tool Fortify, that fortifies positive thinking, personal development, and kickstarts your purpose. I present the relic of Muse. I am <clears throat> I'm Christopher J. Mahalich. I am the innovator and artist of this endeavor. And now I present the four milestones to this adventurous expedition. The what, the how, the why, and the who. The, the what, the relic, is, has <clears throat> the relic has five, five empowering affirmations, five self-creative uh, questions, and eight action statements, thus creating 18 sides to this dynamic art piece. The relic helps with Muse. It's a, it's a game. It's a teaching tool. It's a marketing tool. It's a motivator and helps, with, helps generate ideas. The how. Toss it, turn it, roll it, or if you prefer to leave on your desk or your coffee table to simply observe it. Either way, this enchanting power will start to influence your subconscious mind. The why. Well, the why is different for everyone. Perhaps it's a personal goal, a health goal, a spiritual goal, a relationship goal, or a business goal. So seize the power of the relic of Muse. So finally, who benefits from this inspirational artifact? It's you, the student, the teacher, and the dreamer. And then on that note,
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carl. Good morning, everybody. My name is Carl Weatherspoon, Jr. I'm here for Super Sports Incorporated, the Edutainment Recreation Center. Work hard, play harder. It's an all-inclusive recreation center that has something for everybody to do and learn. It's to cultivate, restore, and rejuvenate the Northwest Indiana area, the area that I call home that I grew up in. Um, it's gonna be a quiet level recreation center. Um, the first level is gonna be administrative offices and education, tutoring rooms, something for everybody, the education. The second floor is state-of-the-art computer labs, video conference centers, chat centers, pretty much that. The third level would be the entertainment, um, workout, underwater treadmills, the best of the best in facility for your health and your body. And pretty much the last level is gonna be bowling alleys and video game, arcades and things of that nature. Something to bring back kind of the spunk to the Northwest Indiana area because it lost so much of that. So that's definitely something that everybody of all ages, and it's a daycare too for moms, so everybody should be able to come. So I'm just getting through it. Um, education, entertainment, and this is excellence on the end, but also this is can go for excellence as well. Kind of a visual for you all to like see where I'm trying to go with this. But now it's the last 10 seconds. I need the audience to participate with me. Everybody raise your right hand, please. Take your right finger and vote yes. Thank you, have a great day. Hello, my name is Michael Finney. I have a content marketing company called Mystic Waters Media. So who here uses social media, right? Who uses it for their business? All right, maybe you've utilized Facebook Insights or created some reports with Hootsuite, and you'll probably know that there are a lot of developments going on in data science right now. Twitter recently cut off Firehose access to a company called DataSift, and Microsoft actually acquired another company called DataZen, right? So this suggests a lot of interest in who and how data is created every day and getting processed. Right? However, after talking with a few dozen folks, uh, we've learned that the pain points of using data to market their, their business and are trying to create a platform that improves that. So we begin developing one that amalgamates locational information from networks like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and others to generate a narrative about uh, your promotional efforts. The goal is to learn faster, improve our practices, and improve ROI. Thank you very much.